Am I best to take a shower at night before I go to bed or when I wake up in the morning? If questions like this have crossed your mind, then you're in good company. Today we'll be taking a closer look at some of the daily habits and social conventions that make up the monotony of life. Let's store both unused and used batteries together in the same box. Grab your knitting needles and a blanket because it's time for three old friends to sit around and sew a new patch into their quilt of friendship. So join me, Dion, under the covers with Christian. Welcome to Patchwork. And Josh. Welcome to Patchwork. Now, before we get started, it won't come as a surprise to any of our frequent listeners that Josh, you and I were at a music festival a couple of weeks ago. Golden Plains. Golden Plains Music Festival. Now, Josh and I decided it was uh, maybe about 10 o'clock in the morning. We're going to go for a bit of a walk, get our morning coffee. Went into the line. It was a very long line, a long wait. (laughs) So long. (laughs) (laughs) You look so distressed. It was all worth it for me when we got to the front of the line and Josh gave his coffee order and then they asked for his name josh you use the name joshy p yes you gave them the name (laughs) joshy p yes because there is a lot of people around now for anyone who's (laughs) listening to welcome to patrick for the first time what's your name josh porter josh and you gave the name joshy p yes please Please explain. So, there's so many people waiting for the coffees. Odds are there might be another Josh there. Yeah. I'd rather just give a really distinct name. Hang on. So the odds. So you're saying that of the maybe five, six people who are waiting for more their than coffee, that. waiting for their coffee. Yeah, more than that. All right. Let's say ten. Uh, let's say ten on our side and another ten or fifteen on the other side, mate. Sure. It was packed. Sure. Let's say that there's twenty people yep. waiting. You think that they'll call out the name Josh? And then multiple people will go up and there'll be just absolute chaos. Yes, that is a possibility. So if I can just do a very simple thing to avoid that, just do that. So, okay, I understand that. Why Joshy? <laughs> oh, yeah, true. Not Josh P. Because Joshy P sounds a bit cooler, right? Because yeah, uh, then you sound like a bit of a wanker if you're going Josh and then the first letter of your surname. <laughs> yeah. sure. I assume. Uh, no, it's because it's more distinct, right? If I just did Josh P, there's still the Josh thing and someone else, oh, hang on, is that me? And they're going up. Just give it really unique. No one else is going to be using the name Joshy P on their coffee <laughs> Christian, order. Uh, just, to, just to understand, are you against anyone not using their correct name on a coffee order? Um, yeah, I don't like when people... People use fake names. It's like a personal victory that they have. And you're like, why? It was, it was really nothing. It's not a personal victory. I've got a friend who has a very complicated name. Her name is Lambrini. And she always, when she gets coffee, it's just Lucy. Yep. It's and just it, Lucy. And in that instance, absolutely fine. Yep. But she doesn't make herself sound like she's part of a, a boy band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was the problem. It was so you don't so much have a problem with changing your name. It's the fact that it was Josh. <laughs> just, like, okay. Also, Joshy P. It's just a bit of fun. We're all in music That's festival. What it is. We're having a bit I of coffee. Knew it. What's fun about That's it? That's what it was. <laughs> That's not that. So you wouldn't do that if you're getting a coffee in the city. You wouldn't do that. Ah, uh, probably not. When there's not it, it, the, the chances were, it's a combination. It's a bit of fun. <laughs> we're at a music festival. Also, a lot of people avoid confusion. That's what I wanted you to say. Great. It was for a little bit of fun, wasn't it? And wasn't it? No, we, lo- we love it. Who's having fun? <laughs> I I would have hated to call that out. Joshy P, your coffee order. They didn't even say Joshy P. They said Joshy. I was know- like, who's who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, can I can I ask you when I'm ordering a coffee and and I say my name is Dion, then I go and I spell it out. And I think to myself after, like, why do, why does it yeah. matter? I want them to take it down how they've heard it. And if it's something similar, if it's D-E-O-N, probably the way you'd write it, Josh, yep. then it's totally fine. But I, I correct them and I go, no, it's D-I-I. I I for I don't I, I don't, iPhone. I don't I actually don't have an I for something. I have an F. My surname's Factor. I have an F for Fred, but I don't have an I or Igloo. a D. D for what do I say? Yeah, it's D for Dion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but do you feel somewhat protective of your name, Dion? We've heard in the past that you hate it when people pronounce it incorrectly. I'm not protective of it. I think that people need to have respect for their names and others and not elongate your name. Hey, what about what about you, Joshua? You hate don't don't you hate in some situations people not calling you Joshua? There are the, the situation I rather Joshua rather than Josh is on like written documentation because the word is more balanced. There's more letters to it. Excuse so, me. Visually, it's more, a more balanced. Oh, is that the re- so? So it's not. Oh, I see. So it's a visual thing. Yeah, if you're writing your name on a certificate or something, Joshua Porter looks a lot nicer than just Josh Porter. Yeah, I guess it probably does. It maybe it's the the two syllables thing. Yeah, it's got longevity to it. It's got longevity. Is that what I'll you're have saying? this name for the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> 
Christian, has anyone ever tried to shorten your name? Yeah, and I tell them not to. <laughs> Chris, what? yeah, Chris. Or cr- have you ever had Christ? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you actually properly? Had, no, but all nicknames. But Chris really irks me because oh. I'm no Chris. But it's interesting, Dion. Your with your coffee order. Why yep. don't you then, if you're like, instead of hassle of spelling it, just say Peter. Just pick something completely different that you know it's just going to be you. Yeah, I could, I could do that. I guess I don't get coffees that often, but I reckon I would do that. Or I'd go something. Cl- I think I'd do something that starts. Do a name that starts with a D. I think that's probably yeah. what I do. Daphne. Dan or Daniel Daphne. Daphne. But like you said before, Josh, is there no risk that you get confused and you actually don't go up to collect your order because you've forgotten the name that you gave? What a risk that is. Imagine that. You get your name called out. You don't get your coffee standing there two hours later going, <laughs> oh, I wonder what, excuse me, can I just ask, why hasn't Joshy P got their order yet? <laughs> <laughs> So I've got a little update for you both and for listeners. Uh, I joined a gym and I really enjoy it. Well done, <laughs> uh, so that's my that's my update because previously I've said that I do not understand the concept of gyms. Uh, I still don't, but I get the benefit <laughs> from it. So apologies to anyone that I might have uh, offended, including you, uh, Christian and Josh and listeners. Um, but anyway, one thing I've been doing is I've been getting up earlier in the morning and I've been going to the gym um, and I've actually been having a shower the night before. Now, usually I will shower in the morning, but because I'm getting up earlier in the morning, I want to just have a really quick escape from the house so I can get to the gym. Mm. And I'm loving it. I'm loving having a shower at night. And so I wanted to ask you guys, what are the perils of having a shower at night? What are the perils of having showers at morning? Or more specifically, what's your preference? Yeah, I'll, I'll rarely shower at night. Uh, for me, it's entirely morning because I need it to wake up. Yeah. A shower in the morning is a necessary part of my routine because without showering in the morning, I feel very crusty and dehydrated. I feel like a little bit like a sultana. And then when I get in the shower, I'm rehydrated back into a, a full grown prune. <laughs> yeah, can you can you reverse the the sultana's uh, yeah, dehydration? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you leave them in oh. water, they turn back into a grape. Oh perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Go back on the vine. Yeah. <laughs> But to your your situation, Dion, you're having a shower after the gym, right? Uh, yes, I am having a shower. So after you're the gym. kind of double dipping now at this point. I am. Ooh. There was a point in my life where I could do exercise and go straight to work and not have to shower. When I, when I didn't used to there was, stink. There was now a point I in your stink. life where you wouldn't sweat. Uh, no, I would no, I wouldn't sweat that much. Yes, but also just wouldn't smell that much. And now. Mm. I'm using natural deodorant. It's just, I'm basically, the natural deodorant is just me breathing on my armpits. <laughs> yeah. And it's and I stink now. And I, I absolutely stink. And so I'm wondering, is that a thing of old age? Um, I think for me, I, I used to, as a, a younger man and as a child, would always be a nighttime thing. And oh. I'd, I'd bathe of a night, shower, and then into bed and wouldn't do it in the morning. Get Hang up. on, bathe, bathe or shower? Well, I'm, t- I'm including both of them. Okay, so, great. Thank like you. Bathe of the night? Yeah. I would bathe of the night. <laughs> Sounds like you're the sixth to get in of your siblings. <laughs> into the bathtub. Um, and now, though, I am very much just the morning. And I think for me, it's to do with the cycle of the day, I guess. And mm-hmm. I want to be clean at the start of that cycle and then move on with the rest of the day. Because my bed isn't always clean enough. If you constantly showered at night and you got in your bed, your bed would always be clean, oh, and you would wake up feeling no. a lot cleaner. No, that's not true. Why not? Because you sweat during the night. But it has to be more true. So it'd, be, it'd be cleaner than if you're showering in the morning, clearly. Sorry, Dion, you missed. Christian just said, no, no, you sweat during the night. What are you talking about? No, we know Hang he does that. He's no, looking, everybody look. does that. Everyone sweats. Everyone has night terrors. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. You're not profusely sweating, but I'm saying that you certainly do sweat. Like that's a that's a scientific fact. Okay, and no, obviously no. all three of us can speak about science. Yeah, I was with little say, regard for the truth. I was gonna say, like, so do you sweat, Christian? Are you saying you sweat in most situations? Then yes. Uh, so you're sweating all the time. Uh, yes. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> Christian's doing a lot of lie detector tests. It is bad. It's like, oh god. No. So that makes perfect sense then, Christian. You want to uh, shower in the morning because you've been sweating in bed overnight and your bed's dirty. That is also my reason that my bed is not clean enough that I don't wake up and get out of bed and feel like, yeah, I feel really clean right now. 
I always feel a little bit dirty. Yeah, but it has nothing to do with waking up as well. Do you not feel like that kind of energizing feeling that you get after oh, the yeah. shower? That, that's a huge part of it, the waking up side yeah. of things. That's massive for me as well because that's the first thing I do. It's like I don't have breakfast or anything. like get up straight into the shower. Yep. Yeah, I feel as though, Dion, at the end of the day, mm. I see having a shower almost like it's a bit of an effort. Now, I know Now I, I love showers. You know me, Dion, and I love a shower. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you finished work. You may have yep. uh, done something after work. You get home. You have some dinner. Then it's quite late, and you're like, uh, if I'm going to have one, I could just have one in the morning. Yeah, I guess. I guess we've got that privilege, I guess, to be able to... Look, we could have showers. What about an afternoon shower? What about if you could have a shower mm. at work? That'd be pretty refreshing. If you're feeling a bit down during the day... You've got a lot of work on your place. Like, no. I'm just going to take a shower. Yeah. It's 2 p.m., Christian. No. What the hell are you doing? No, a shower for me is a bookend. It's either the start yeah. or the end. Mm. It's never the middle. And so what other stuff? So for me now, I'm packing my bags at night as well. Oh, yeah. I pa- man, packing your bag at night is the best thing ever. I love it. You wake up in the morning, everything's done. Yep. You hardly need to. You don't even need to get up. It, <laughs> it's making the decisions for yourself yeah. the night before. Jo- Josh, I, I, I would hazard a guess you have never packed your bag the night before. My bag is in some state always packed. Really? Yeah, I keep a lot of stuff in my backpack that is stuff that I I don't have to worry about putting in and out. I hate this about people. Somehow, Josh, your backpack, it's like one of those magician's backpacks. You open it up and you can pull out like a swimming pool net. No. And then, and then <laughs> yeah. there's a rabbit. You'd, you'd hate it because I've never seen you with a consistent bag over a, a, the sp- Span of more than a year? Yeah, yeah, this is true. I've never settled on a bag that I love, nor have I known how to organise the space inside of it. I feel like I run out of space in a bag faster than other people. What sort of bag do you currently use as your go-to bag? So if you're going over to someone's place and you're taking maybe your computer, what's your go-to I've bag? Got a, I've got the backpack that I've got here today. Yeah, that's sh- a piece of shit over there. It's a, it's a regular backpack, but I feel like... The space inside is too small for me. But then I've seen someone else use it. They had runners in there. I was like, how did you fit runners? Do do you know why? Because your backpack is tiny. Is it? It's it's probably, do you know what? Liters with bags is impossible to estimate. Yeah. Impossible. I'd say that's 20 It's like I'm not ever, ever carrying water in this. (laughs) That's right. That's right. It's such a strange metric. Have have you ever tried to fill your bag up (laughs) and see whether you got bang for buck? I just want to know what other metric would you use instead of liters for a bag? What would you use? Uh, What do you want to know? Full size balloons. Yeah, I know. Blow up normal party balloons. How many party balloons is this? You've got to do. Perfect. (laughs) (laughs) You've got to do like real world things. It could be like two jumpers. Like it's just that. Yeah. Two jumpers in a lunchbox. No, but you need... Yeah, but, but lunchbox. They, but they need to advertise that on their tag. Yeah, so it has yeah, to be something. Absolutely. So I'm thinking, have you got something better than balloons? Oh, you want it fully standardised? Yeah. Mm. I reckon you probably go fruit like an apple. How many apples are going in that this? That is uh, shocking. But that's in your mind's eye. You can you can visualise 20 apples quite easily. Yeah, but no, nah, but you can, 20 but apples what? isn't telling me how many jumpers I can fit in my bag. Uh, I reckon 20 then apples. Have, then you have to have a standard <laughs> apple to jumper conversion. Yeah. Oh, I reckon great. 20 apples is like a jumper and a half. <laughs> So no, thick, it's not. A thick woolen jumper and then a very thin jumper as well. A jumper and a half a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> oh, I've got an idea. Here we go. This is great. What about cakes? Like chocolate <laughs> no. chocolate cakes. Think about it. Think about how easy it is. How many cakes can fit in that bag? Do you, but are you talking... How many cakes? Eight cakes. No, eight no. Cakes. Eight cakes. No. It, are they sitting flat? Yeah. Yeah, of course they are. No, no. So are you are you packaging and trying to move the cakes or are you just smushing cake in? No, it's just... No, it's how many... It's the volume of... Ca- it's how many... The volume is ha- eight cakes. It's liquid. Seven cakes. <laughs> it has to be liquid. They were right. Because it's Why? about filling the entire bag. No, but you're not, you're not filling the entire bags with Air. liquid though. No, I've got it. I've got Air. it. Yeah. Roll the toilet paper. Yeah, that's great. Because it's a little bit squishy, a little yes. bit squashy. Yeah, yes. absolutely. That or cake. A little bit squishy or squashy. <laughs> yep. I wipe my bum with a cake. <laughs> Dion, just to come back to morning showers and night showers, yes. can you ever have two? Would you ever have two in the day? Yeah, of course. Having a night shower and then waking up and having a morning shower, though. I've yeah. done that. Because yeah. normally if I come home from netball late and I'll have a shower to clear off that and then I still do my normal one in the morning, it feels really redundant. It does. Like I clean myself in the morning and go, this isn't dirty enough, mate. You're wasting, yeah. you're wasting your time. But yeah. it's in and out, right? In the morning. Uh, it's, still a, it's still a normal one. The key for me is I've got to get my hair wet because mm. if I wake up, and try to go out. My hair has... The way that I sleep, I don't understand. 
I wake up and it's all, I think I've, I actually think I've said this before. It's all pushed into the center and it's like all my hair just clumps into a ball in the center of my head. What? I don't know how I sleep, but it's like I wake up do with you, a top bun. Do you, like, <laughs> do you slide in between the pillows in the I middle? Must, and I just, love that. I must. You with a top bun and in a leotard as yeah. well. <laughs> Hey guys, so I was scrolling through Instagram the other day and I was scrolling and I was scrolling and I was scrolling and I got all the way back to Galileo Galilei. Oh wow. At Figaro Magnifico. <laughs> And, uh, and he'd posted a picture and it was piles and piles of documents with um, handwritten calculations on there and there were maps of the stars. <laughs> and the caption reads, they've just named me the father of modern physics, but I still can't work out why my parents gave me the same first name as my last name. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag sing Galileo. <laughs> sing Galileo. <laughs> Dion, I, I saw you scrolling through Instagram. Yeah, I was scrolling, scrolling, scrolling right to the bottom and I came across a post by Chuck underscore Chaplin. <laughs> uh, and it's just a selfie uh, of uh, Charlie in his car with his wife. Um, and, and the caption reads, I wish my wife and I had more to say to each other. I'm so bad with extended silence. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag, I have the same moustache as Hitler, even though I oppose him. It's <laughs> a long hashtag. <laughs> It's trending. That's re- <laughs> reached the character limit, didn't it? Yeah. Um, I, I also amazingly was on Instagram as well. I wow. scrolled all the way, all right, 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 round. Got all the way back to Archimedes at Mighty Medes. <laughs> and he had a photo of a bubble bath with some candles all around it. And the caption said, finally some me time. Thanks to at Bed Bath and Toga for the bath bobs. <laughs> Can't wait to get in there and display some water. <laughs> Hashtag Eureka. <laughs> and now it's time for Oh Palau of the Week. Oh Palau. Oh Palau. Oh Palau. On January 1st, 2020, Palau became the first nation to ban sunscreen that is toxic to its coral reefs. Oh Palau. Oh Palau. Oh Palau. <laughs> oh Palau. <laughs> I was taking the bins out the other day um, and I realised that for me, in a very, very real sense, a highlight of my week is fitting all the rubbish into the bins <laughs> on bit night. Just to clear everything out, the, the, the main rubbish is all gone, the recycling's all gone. I love that feeling. And so I was wondering, do you guys have a similar feeling about taking the rubbish out? Is that an exciting moment for you or nope. is it just a massive chore? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> What's exciting about it? We have to dig deeper. Oh, it, it just feels great because you've got the, the rubbish that's been piling up all week, and then it's a clear, it's a clean sweep. What? Wait, what? Where is your, where is the rubbish piling up? Oh, we've got a recycling box that sits in our kitchen, and so and so, but it's just one pour into the recycling bin, isn't it? Um, no, because we fill it up so quickly, so there's a lot of pours throughout the week. But what, so, what's exciting about that final moment? Of that it's all gone for the week. And it's done. It's, we got it in. Yeah, I mean, I want to go to how you pack it down, but I'm sure we'll get to that. <laughs> Christian. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the distancing yourself from your own filth, right? It's like, ah, a clean week now. Yeah, yeah. It's all out of there. It's all fit. And particularly when you've got heaps of recycling and you manage to get in your neighbor's bins because they've already put it out, just get rid of all of it. It's great. I've just I've just never been able, and, I've, and I feel really guilty for this, but I've never been good with the days of the week that the rubbish has to be brought out. Oh, I've always too. leaned on the people in the house who are familiar with, oh, it's Thursday, so therefore it's bin night. I never remember. I'm nah. always I'm always reminded by other people that have their bins out. Well, yes. ha- well how, how often have you guys been moving over the last like decade? Yeah, that's true. And I live in an apartment complex. And with rubbish, I don't care if people put shit in my bin. I do not care. If someone wants to load up my bin, I don't care. They're all going out. Do you guys have a problem with that? Nah, absolutely not. I have a problem not. with that at all. As long as you can get your own rubbish in, yeah, that's the issue. Yeah and, yeah, and I can and it's fine. But some people are very protective of their bins. Very, very protective. It drives I, me nuts. I feel once they're on the nature strip, once they're out, it's fair game. You've made the decision that that's done. Although yeah. I did see something amazing the other week. I went to an auction with my girlfriend and... We, we were sort of trying to sound out who at the auction was uh, was going to bid. And we identified this one guy and we thought, yeah, he's definitely going to bid. He's sort of parading around. He's got documentation in his hand. He's parading around. Two minutes before the auction started, the neighbours came out from their houses next to, next to these houses being sold. 
one of the neighbors came out and this guy who we thought was going to buy the house went over to one of the neighbor's houses, lifted up the bin from over the fence, oh. lifted up the bin and chucked rubbish in there. And I was like, oh my God, if I was moving into a house, one of my main priorities would be making sure I'm good with the neighbors. And the guy bought the house and, and the neighbor saw him doing that. That's how it starts. That's how that starts. Oh, that's the worst. These, these neighborly sort of um, relationships build over years and years and years. Sometimes they're great. Sometimes there's heaps of tension. From minus one day, oh, he no. set the tone. He's going to be an asshole neighbor. I love it. I love it. Right after they stick the sold sticker up, then the next house has put one for sale. <laughs> <laughs> when you uh, when you walk into somebody's house. Where is your immediate instinct to walk to if you want to use the bin? It's got to be under the sink. <laughs> it's right? under the it's sink. It's got to be right? under yeah. the sink. Oh, that shit needs to be, once again, cakes for volume of backpacks, bin <laughs> location standardized. All that shit I'll needs be, to be standardized. I'll tell you what I can't stand with the, the sink, the bin under the sink, is a lid that doesn't open nicely and <laughs> yeah. it lets me get the rubbish in there easily. Yeah. Yeah. If you've got something, like I've got a friend at his place and it's <laughs> hell, it's like a press with your foot one inside the cupboard under the sink. So you have to go into the Thing, yes, open it up, dumb. put your foot on the press thing, it lifts up and hits the top of the bloody cupboard. What do you want him to do? Like, you want him to get another bin? Yeah. Or just take a, off the yeah. lid? Yeah, yeah, either or. Yeah. None of them work, though. None of them work, because even the ones that you slide out and they reveal their contents to <laughs> put it in, yeah. they're difficult to pull out. And also, yeah. they're full after, like, two hours. So full. They so are. They're like, is... Yeah, they're like two cakes worth, easily. <laughs> <laughs> that is the issue with bins under the sink, is that the sink takes up so much space. Yes. Yeah. You need a separate cupboard. Yeah. Yes, you for do. this for a bin. And and it shouldn't be so close to where people live. No, but you want the rubbish to be accessible. You want people not to be like, oh, I'm not going all the way over there. Yeah, but, but I'll go to, to the sink. It yeah. has to be hidden away. I don't like a bin that's in eye shot. Our bin is very much like almost a feature of the kitchen. For anyone who wasn't aware, Josh and I now live together. Yeah, it's amazing. It's it's an incredible development. I'm looking forward to all of these rubbish stories. And, and, and that's the thing. So now I've moved into the place and I am now working with a different refuse system, right? Yeah. So recycling goes in a big box, Dion. Mm-hmm. And yes, it does fill quickly. Mm-hmm. We've got a foot pedal rubbish bin. Yep. So you, you put your foot down, opens the lid. Yep. Fine with that. But then, Josh... Most interestingly, which I've taken some issue with, is the compost bin. Bone to pick, Christian? Yes, I think this might be a bone to pick. I got a bone to pick. Josh, I've got a bone to pick with the small compost bin that sits next to the large hard rubbish bin in the kitchen. Yep. Why is it exposed? Why is it exposed to the air? There are so many flies around it. Oh, that's pretty weird. I have no interest in doing the compost. And it was it was thrust upon me, and I don't want to really want to do the compost. In, in, in composting or doing the compost? There's everything around it, because it's too much hassle for me, and I can't be bothered. But someone's taken ownership, one of the housemates yeah, has taken yeah. ownership of was, the compost. And that was an old bin, and was like, let's just reuse that. In Josh's defense, small compost bins are a dime a dozen. A good ones are. I've had plastic ones. Plastic ones are rubbish. You need a good metal one. I recently bought one. It was 50 bucks. Metal, holes, charcoal in the lid. To stop, to, to dissipate on, but, the, the, but the moisture. inside the house. Yeah, it, it's amazing. It's the best compost bin. I think we should go shopping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's great. We'll go after this. The other thing that Christian failed to mention is we have a, a soft plastics as well. Got another bag for that. Yep. So we got bags for everything floating all around our house. Yep. But one thing that I don't think we really do enough, and you were talking about the flies, is clean the bin. How often are you guys cleaning your main rubbish bin? Not, uh, not the wheelie bin. I'm talking about the one that lives yeah. in the house. I uh, never. Never? <laughs> Is that why bins stink? No, but yeah. you know what I don't get? Why do I need to clean the bin? I put in a plastic bag. I put shit in. How does it get wet? I got, <laughs> you can explain to me condensation as, as many times as you like. I don't get it. I'll never get it. How is water getting through? Because the rubbish we spoke earlier, it sweats. It's always sweaty. <laughs> Is it? Is that it? During the night. Yeah. <laughs> I told you, some t- everything sweats okay. at night. So, Christian, how often are you typically washing the main rubbish bin of your house? Never. Never. never? It, I mean, maybe, sorry, when I, when I used to live at home, I'd wash it once a year probably because it's that time that you're pulling the bin out. It catches the edge of the, uh, of the container, rips the bin open, and then you've got wet apple right at the bottom growing yeah. flies yeah i reckon for me it's when when it gets to the point where you kind of notice oh that's really 
there's a lot of juice. There's a lot of bin juice at the bottom of that. I'm probably, but for the most part, it's just the, the hose spray. Can, yeah. can just I out s- the back with a hose jet. Can I yeah. ask just a question just on the side? If someone was to pay you to have a teaspoon of that bin juice, how much would you be willing to uh, do it for? I'm, I'm so low with all this stuff. Are you really? Yeah. That's great. <laughs> it's like, it's not going to kill me, right? How yeah, much, it how might. Much, like, how much is low? Might. Should we say it all at the same time? One, two, three. Three, two hundred bucks. Bu- <laughs> <laughs> I'm like fifty bucks. Fifty yeah, bucks. I could get heaps of great stuff for fifty dollars. Christian, twenty five bucks each. Let's do it. <laughs> Are you serious, Josh? Fifty yeah, bucks. Fifty's great to put something potentially incredibly harmful into your That's body. That's the thing. Uh, That's when. No. Yeah, it's the safety. It's the safety aspect that gets to you. If you knew it was safe, if it, you if, do it for ten. If I knew it was just gross, I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. But if it's like health reasons, then nah. I'll what makes you that. think that the bottom of a bin? <laughs> Wouldn't be perilous to your health. Um, I don't know. I just feel like if it's if it's wet and juicy enough, it's probably <laughs> oh, wow. it's probably been it one. Must be fine. No, it's so probably stupid. been one specific thing that has um, built it up. This is coming from the awesome. person who I was over the other night has the filthiest mug I've ever seen. <laughs> Christian, bone to pick with Josh. I got a bone to pick. What the fuck are you doing with that <laughs> mug? So this mug, it's almost black inside with tea. So it's blackened from tea. With tea, yes. Yeah. Just from a lot of tea. Yeah, so why why is that acceptable? Why don't you just clean it? Because it's flavors it's more flavoursome for the rest of the tea no, than I have other times. It's not. It is. I gave you that idea the other night and now you've latched onto no, it. No, that is literally why I do it. So is it actually does it actually taste better the tea when you haven't every, washed it properly? Every subsequent cup of tea that goes that I drink from that has more tea flavor to it. Okay, so just to get this right, Josh will wash a bin and won't wash his <laughs> mug. <laughs> Are you kidding? So you're growing a live culture of tea or it's something not, in your no, cup? No, it's not gross, okay? Because I rinse it out. No, that's not an argument. You just said, you can't just say it's not gross and then leave it at no, that. No, but it's not. It's not like it's growing mold or anything. I'm like, geez, can't clean that. It's growing oh. something. No, it's not. It is. It's, it's, t- it's tea sticking to the inside of a cup. Yes, yeah, so it's growing tea. What it's not do you mean? mean? <laughs> then why wash any dish? What? <laughs> why wash any dish? Yeah. Why don't you have a pasta dish? Oh, this is where I have Brilliant. my red pasta steak sauces. Dish. Great steak, idea. Oh, this steak tastes so much better because I've never washed it. Yep, yep. I'm going to get like seven plates. <laughs> seven plates, one, one for, for every each. meal. Yep. Yeah, oh, that'll be right. That'll sort me out. <laughs> <laughs> Just one quick other question yep. about the bins that I want to know from you guys. Um, you know when you pull, particularly a long bin, when you're pulling the bag of rubbish out and it gets that <laughs> mega suction yeah. and won't move, yeah. what is what are you guys doing to, to prevent mega suction and actually be able to extricate the bag mm. from the bin? Christian, what are you doing? Very interesting yeah, so, opinion on this. So I did something the other night that Josh, you pulled me up on. And at first I was defensive, but then I realized I was wrong. <laughs> so I'd like to uh, apologize to you first. What I will do, <laughs> what I will do ordinarily uh, if there's mega suction, Josh, as I yeah. think that you fra- phrased it, um, I will just open the big bin lid and tip the contents straight in and then pull the pla- the empty plastic bag out afterwards. Oh, oh what? So the, the whole garbage in the bag doesn't exist? Yeah. So so oh. I just I just tip the garbage oh, into weird. the big bin. I hate that. Oh, I hate that. Ooh. I don't know why I hate that yeah, no, so it's much. It's awful. You hate that because then it gets the big bin, your big bin, dirty. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. and then that, and then that, you have to live with that. Because what I do is, I, ideally, a ruler, but whatever it is, just slide something down the side of the bin between the bag and the bin. Oh, that's clever. And just get some air, and soon you get a little bit of airflow in there. Why don't you use your hand? I do use my hand. Why did you say ruler? Because ideally, I use a ruler. Why? It's ideally? disgusting in there. I wouldn't want to touch what's inside <laughs> yeah, the bin. Right. Fifty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, Josh. Problem, no problem. I went to my parents' house, had a shower, and used their bar of soap. Christian, problem, no problem. No problem. Josh, problem, no problem. No problem. Dion? Problem. Problem. Yeah, yeah, big problem. Why? That's disgusting. (laughs) No, but for me, the difference is I won't use the soap on my body. I'll lather into the hand and then rub the hand on the body. So I'm not having that kind of direct soap on body contact. I actually don't know how you're supposed to use soap. Come on. Are you meant to do that? Come on, mate. Is it meant to be lathered in your hand or can you lather on your body? Christian, don't look at me like that. I know you're thinking about this as well. No, no, no. I agree with you wholeheartedly. <laughs> yeah, I've great. just always hated the fact that I don't know if the bar of soap as I rub it under my armpit is doing anything. Is it just like caressing the bacteria? <laughs> what are you guys talking about? You can't use soap wrong. What do you mean? Yes, you can. If yes. you leave it on the floor while and stand okay. on it, you're using it wrong. Okay, so, okay, ready? <laughs> so, loofers exist, right? Yeah. Do they feel the same as a soap? 
What's a loofah? A loofah is like those sponge. Da- dangly sponge things that are coarse. Oh, great. <laughs> um, sorry, what was the... Does a loofah feel the same as a bar of soap? Well, no, because one's a sponge and one's a hard block of Correct. clean. But a loofah is designed to give you a proper clean, right? Yes. Okay, I see what you're doing. But that's yeah. more for, um, what's the word, exfoliating and yeah. to but, scrub. But isn't that cleaning? That's more clean. No, but the issue here is hygiene, right? It's if you go over to a friend's place ke- and you see that bar of soap there and you're having a shower in their shower. No. Can you use that? No, no, Are you no, allowed no, to no. use different, it? Different from family. Really? So I'll, so with let me just make my point clear. With family, <laughs> I will, Dion, similar to you, get a good lather in my hands because that's me saying I've removed the outer surface ah, clever. of the soap. I like it, Krishna. But I like I'll, it. <laughs> I'll do it under under the, the stream of water yep. Yep. and then I'll use it on my body. Oh. Oh, so you go full con- are you going full contact full with the contact, soap on body? Dion? Hang on, what about Dion? I wonder what Dion's... I think... I don't think I'm drawing a... I don't think I'm thinking about it enough and I think I might be going contact and I shouldn't Ooh. be. And Ooh. I'm... Just, Mummy and Daddy, I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, the thing is, Dion, I try to be considerate. So when I finished giving myself an all over, I will then remove... The layer again I'll do another lather of the soap And put it back This is the thing It's like wiping your bottom We're not taught this stuff We're just We're just yeah. thrown into the great outdoors in, It's true. Inside I don't think soap technique in the shower Is that difficult to get really wrong No but there are Like for instance Are you making contact with the bar of soap And your bottom When it's my own one Yeah my own bar of soap you And my it. own bottom <laughs> <laughs> So you're going straight a uh, bar to bottom. Um, oh, I think bottom. I, I I try to just avoid bar direct. <laughs> really, <laughs> Christian, direct. Christian, Josh, bar to bottom. <laughs> I'll I'll go bar to bottom. Yeah, just really. so bar direct. <laughs> You'll go bar to bottom. Yeah, bar to bottom for sure. Because because <laughs> bottom needs bar. Bottom needs bar, but bar can get on hand. No. Hand on bottom. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> But hand on bottom is is more disturbing to me. I want a buffer, a buffer for bottom. <laughs> but why? You're in the shower. You're 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 using the soap on your hand. You don't need buffer for bottom to bar. <laughs> yes, I do. Bar is buffer for bottom. No, uh, it's not. It is no, because no, so, because you're not washing the, the the soap away with the bar. You're washing it with your hand. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm gonna let the water do that job. I'll, I'll, I'll really? apply a gentle spread and let oh. the water <laughs> oh, here flow you go. through. Like, are you guys like a trickling waterfall? <laughs> are you guys barring under the water, or are you barring up outside of the stream? <laughs> I'm sorry. Using the bar of soap. Barring up outside yeah, use the, of the bar of soap. Stream. But are you getting out of the stream to, to to suds up, or are you doing that in the stream of water? Oh, good point. Now I like to do it just outside of the stream of water because I still want that warmth. <laughs> So yeah. I'll, I'll warm up the side that's not getting sudsed up <laughs> and then I'll rotate. Do you know what's tough? What's tough is when you're getting to the last bit of that bar of soap and you realise I'm going to need to ha- make a dash for one of the cupboards and get another bar of soap out. I find that it's kind of like, how wet can I get this for doing that? <laughs> <laughs> it is unbelievable, yeah, isn't it's it? it's unbelievable. Like, how do I do this? Yeah, it's like just throwing a 10 litre <laughs> bucket of water or probably four cakes bucket of water. <laughs> So, Dion, you're saying that you will leave the shower midway through to grab more soap. Yeah, of course. But How what, much soap are you using in the shower? Well, I might not have thought. I mean, who is putting, who's refilling the bar of soap at the end of a shower? I don't have that foresight. Do you have that foresight to do that? To refill the soap? Yeah. To put another bar of soap not in there. Not at the end of it. No, no, no exactly. I, so, I, it's halfway through. Who has ever finished a bar of soap? Have you ever experienced that moment oh. where you're like, oh, this doesn't exist anymore? <laughs> yeah, that's a really good... Meaning that little bit is always going down the drain. Yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. Is, right? Do you ever... Comp- if you do retain that and you go out and you make that dive and you get that oh, new bar of soap, pathetic. are you ever trying to attach I, that I little bit? that is pathetic. pathetic. No, attaching it on's great. No, it's not. You've got to, you got to wet both sides, though. Wet the new bar, wet the old no. bar, and smush it in a bit. Because then you're mixing two oh, cents. Oh, that's what I'm doing wrong. That's why they never work. It's dry. It's this kind of thing I just don't think through enough. Well, yeah. What are you, you trying to do? Josh? Just put it, I don't know, just put it together. Like a hat. <laughs> just a bit of a <laughs> <laughs> It's a hat of its dead brother. On the corner. <laughs> oh. Uh. <laughs> or sister. <laughs> <laughs> I think the key for using anyone else's soap other than your own yep. is you gotta clear the hairs. That is, yeah. And yes. I love your system, Krishna, yeah. of the hand wipe to get that layer off. And yeah, it's, it's great. very clever. That's great. Yeah. That's a great tip for listeners out there. Great tip for us. If uh, <laughs> if now if we extend it one step further from soap, are you if you're going over to your family's place, Dion? Yep. Are you grabbing the shampoo, conditioner? You're just whatever's on offer? This is great. So we've got a spare shower that isn't used, but there's 
the only conditioner and shampoo that's available in that shower are the little bottles that have been taken from hotels. Right. There seems to be some weird resistance. And I feel like just going in there, getting big bottles and going, hey, use these. Yeah, Don't these use the it. rubbish ones from the hotels. They're garbage. Mm-hmm. They are garbage. But they're free. And those caps are impossible to get back on. <laughs> 90% of the caps on those little bottles are, in- are incredibly difficult to they're get not, on. They're not designed to go back on though. So really those caps need to be like corrugated or like grippy in some way because yes. they're always super smooth and flat. So they of course are. you can't put them on when your hand's soaking yeah, wet. Yeah, they're shocking. The, just on the topic of that, the other thing that you get are shower caps at hotels. Mm. I used to use them all the time. As a hair. Because I used to have showers. We're back. I used to have showers uh, and not want to get my hair wet before bed. So I used to... Why I used don't, to do shower caps, yeah. Why? Why don't... Well, of course you did. Yeah. You had fucking three metre long hair. <laughs> but I don't know why I did. Why, why didn't I just keep my hair out of the shower? Why, why can't you get your hair wet before bed? I've never understood my mum saying this. I love going to bed with wet hair. I think it's really easy to get sick, isn't it? And then your pillow gets wet. And yeah. your, your body's nice. cold. Nah. It's nice. Nah, you, no, you, you've it's made the wrong not. decision there, Christian. No, no, you no. shouldn't go to bed with wet hair. No, I made the decision that's right for me. <laughs> but with those shower caps, it's weird that now when I don't want to wash my hair, I just kind of won't go fully under it. Yes. And it gets a little bit wet around the edges. Which is fine. Dries in like a couple minutes. Yeah, that's fine. So why were we so obsessed with shower caps Maybe then? Maybe I like the noise. It sounds like you're in a, a car oh, that yeah. just had rain going on. And it. also, great. you don't need to think about it either. You just get in that shower and you go, oh, I'm, oh it's almost like I'm having a shower like my hair's getting it, wet. It, and then I get out and I'm like, oh, this is <laughs> yeah, great. This is great. It's, it's also your only... <laughs> A cho- a ability to make a fashion choice in the shower. <laughs> yeah. Because you're literally, you're exposed. No, I wear socks. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have grippy, grippy socks and my shower cap. It's great. <laughs> really, really good. You know what's really, really good? Really, really good. You know what's really, really good? So every fortnight we have our really good Fridays where we ask you people out there listening to this podcast what you think is really good. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Do you know what Jody Erin thinks is really good? When you're approaching charity workers with clipboards on the street and the person walking in front of you distracts them. Oh, really, really good. Really good. Really, really good. good. Really, really good. You know what? Thank you for listening to Welcome to Patchwork for another week. We are on Patreon. That is how you can support us. We do this otherwise for free. It takes shitloads of time <laughs> and we'd love your support. Um, so if you can go to www.patreon.com forward slash Welcome to Patchwork uh, for little as a couple of bucks a month, you can support us. Uh, it ends up being 25 bucks a year. Uh, that's all we're asking from you. So please uh, give generously. And as we do every week, we sew a new patch into our quilt of friendship. Josh, what patch did you sew into your quilt this week? Thank you, Dion. My patch this week was you filling up your backpack with 40 litres of liquid soap. (laughs) (laughs) Christian, what patch did you sew this week? Uh, Josh, this week I sewed into my patch you ordering a shot of bin juice at your favourite drinking hole, Barter Bottom. (laughs) And Dion, what did you sew into your patch this week? My patch this week is Christian entering a bag store with six cakes and ten apples. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for listening to Welcome to Patrick this week. I've been Dion. I've been Josh. And I've been Christian. Goodbye. 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 No, cake's great. I love cake. Go cake. I love <laughs> I love um cake beck and sale. <laughs>